And welcome back uh, for our press review uh, for this morning. We're honored to have with us Dr. Mohsen Badawi, the chairman of the Abdurrahman Badawi Center for Creativity. Thank you, sir, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Uh, the main papers in the, uh, in the news today are concentrating on the uh, election law. Uh, the parliamentary elections are coming up very soon. And uh, there are now discussions between the uh, field marshal Hassan Tatawi or the uh, the political uh, parties with the uh, uh, the the army and the council uh, military council to draft the law uh, for the parliament and shura elections uh, 26 parties have rejected the draft law of the parliamentary and shura elections and there are meetings today to uh, discuss with the political uh, parties how to go forward your point of view sir on this um, situation uh, the election laws law is um, being discussed in in many forms and uh, we have here something that uh, like what i say here that mr abul alamadi who is the uh, uh, chairman of al wasat party uh, asking to postpone uh, the elections few months and that the election comes first before the uh, the uh, constitution mm -hmm. uh, which is very funny when 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 we see how i'll tell you we are in a state of the of refusal we are refusing everything. So I would prefer that everybody comes out, uh, instead of calling the 26 to discuss, let them uh, bring their own uh, draft of uh, the, the, the law. Mm -hmm. And then we discuss what's common between, it, between them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we look at uh, what's, what are the differences. One of the things that I found very funny uh, people are running after uh, the, the elections by uh, a full bill for, uh, for uh, and nobody really understands what it is. Mm. And I do believe it will be a disaster. Uh, we don't understand that um, when we are afraid that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, and let us speak frankly, they will get the majority. Mm. And um, sometimes I, I hear very funny things. They said they will, uh, they will uh, present 49% uh, uh, of the candidates. candidates. Mm. And I hear somebody who is telling me that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood will get 60%. So mm. it's, we don't think. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, in my opinion, cannot get more than 25 to 30 seats. Mm. So it's 5 to 6%. Seats, not percent. Yes. Oh. Um, the elections, the, the, the elections that are the normal you know, by constitution, everybody, it's not the party that is elected, it's the person who is elected. And the Muslim Brotherhood doesn't have more than 25 to 30 people who can be a serious candidate. Mm. So the fear, and that's why I really want to see the, the, this elections coming, so we stop that stupidity about uh, the fear from the Muslim Brotherhood. And the, the, the worst joke is the Salafis. Mm. They do not exist at all. So, and, and we're making a, a farce. Is it a media it. hype, that's all? It is, it is. Um, it is a stupidity from the Western media who came, as usual, they look at uh, what's going on and they've tried to find something new and exciting. So they found the Salafis. And uh, the Salafis, uh, after the, the, the Western media started talking about them, we started talking about them here. Mm. So we made a, a balloon that is uh, nothing, out of nothing. Mm. They, they, they do not have it. A, a Muslim Brotherhood is a very strong uh, body, but does not have a penetration in the, in the, in the, in the society, in the uh, uh, political scene. Uh, they are very strong in themselves, and they are not that big. Mm. Some of them, as everywhere, uh, have their prestige in their community. That's why I'm saying it's the 25 to 30, not depending on their party, but depending on uh, the electoral. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we have to update because previously uh, you can see between 40 and 50 percent of uh, the electoral uh, community um, going to uh, the polls in the norm, the good ones, which is 2000, 2005. Uh, not the previous one or the, the 2010, which was uh, definitely a fraud. Mm. Uh, 40 to 50% in the villages, mm. 3 to 7% in the cities. 
uh, the Muslim Brotherhood have maybe one and a half to two percent of the electoral vote. So one and a half and two percent in the cities were really doing a difference. Now you will find in the city, and as we have seen it in uh, September 20, uh, 19th, uh, March 19th, sorry, uh, it was 40 percent on average. And I expect it will be more in the parliamentary elections. So uh, that bulk, which was uh, in the cities uh, important, won't be seen in the next. Uh, we have to understand what's going on and what is the difference. And we read it calmly because we are now screaming. We don't think. So, so your point of view is that elections should be done in a normal uh, candidates should be run, should run on a normal way, I not prefer on, a list, that. On, a, on this I uh, prefer that, yes. party list. Um, you said that uh, uh, parties should give their own uh, agenda. So they don't just refuse draft. everything. <laughs> okay, uh, there was the National Council have, have made an, an agenda, have made a draft law. Do you feel uh, that draft law, which said there, there should be a list, uh, should be taken into consideration? Uh, the yeah, National I know. Council, yeah. Um, it was a good discussion. Mm. Uh, but uh, the point is, everybody is afraid of something and he doesn't really express his fear. Mm. And um, some of them are thinking that, the, especially the youth, they think that uh, the list would help them go into the, 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 the parliament. Mm. Let us be clear, no one will go into a list if he's a collector of votes to be the last one. He will insist to be on top. So the youth will come last, so they won't have any seat. Mm. So it's not a way to get a seat. Uh. Eventually, I would love to see the list, but with, the, the, with years of political uh, experience. Mm. So then we will understand that this party is a common culture. This party would do what I want, so I'll start voting for the party. But for now, no one is voting for the party, he's voting for a person. Mm. And it's not by the law that you change that, it needs a culture. Okay. And the culture will come with experience. So, uh, so uh, that's the law that we expect to see very soon after discussions between the military council and the parties, political parties in Egypt. Uh, we are in Ahram newspaper's first page and uh, Field Marshal Sim Tantawi attended the graduation ceremony of the 48th batch of the Military Technical Academy. It was attended by the Army's Chief of Staff Sami Anan and a number of Army's top ranks. Uh, the Army has uh, donated 100 million Egyptian pounds uh, to the Martyrs and uh, Injured uh, Fund. Yeah, these are one of them is a very good uh, news piece, and the other is a very bad one. Mm. Uh, uh, the General Tantawi, or Marshal Tantawi, uh, who attended that, that's an imitation of what used to happen when the president was there. Mm. Um, I'm a son of a, of, a, of a martyr myself from the army, so I, I have great respect to the army, but this is not, uh, this was just used to be to emphasize on the president, and to emphasize on the loyalty of the army to the president. That was the reason why the ex-president wanted to show that. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's, it's news, yes, of course, but it, it doesn't belong to that place. I mean... Uh, First page, top... Yeah. Uh, uh, the other one, uh, and I think this is the most important, if, if I was the, the, the uh, editor of that, the, the most important was the 100 million from the army to the martyrs mm -hmm. and uh, the injured. Uh, a martyr is a person uh, who died for his country, whether in a revolution or in war. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I like to make it clear that his family feels very much bitter. And uh, we have to respect that bitterness. And uh, I hear sometimes people who, don't, who do not understand the word family of a martyr. Uh, the most uh, patriotic people should be those people. Mm -hmm. But if we don't deal with them right, we will get their bitterness, so they won't be really patriotic. Mm -hmm. uh, in the army, and this is an experience we have to do here, uh, they know how to deal with the families of the martyrs. Mm -hmm. 
as I told you, I'm personally, and I passed through that experience and understand how much important this is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the injured is another case. Of course, they have to be treated uh, at the, the utmost uh, care. Uh, they did that for every one of us, the 85 Egyptian, 85 million Egyptian, got their freedom, not by these, but any one of the millions who went to the street could have been one of those. So we have to, whatever it takes, mm. to, 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 uh, to give them the, the best treatment, uh, to pay for their life if they cannot make a living, uh, and the martyrs, we have to absorb the bitterness. And by the way, we, we, we sometimes make the life of the, the injured bitter because the, we don't really give a lot of care. Mm. I mean, it's, it has to be the country. And I really appreciate what they uh, did, the 100 million, as a start from the uh, army. And we have to, as the government and the people, and I put the people third, Mm. because the government should represent the people. Mm. They are taking the, 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 the taxes from us mm. to pay it, and I prefer they pay it here in, instead of uh, driving a Mercedes uh, mm -hmm. themselves. Uh, that takes me to another also uh, uh, item that is linked to the same one. Families of the Suez martyrs cut the Suez Cairo uh, road after freeing the suspects of the, uh, who were suspects of killing uh, martyrs yeah. in, in, in the revolution. And um, this is linked to it, the bitterness there, because they feel that the killers are out and free uh, right now. It's an insult. Mm. A guy who saw that man killing his brother, he knows he did. Mm. What do you think he would do when he see him uh, set free for 10,000 pounds? Now we know he's, uh, this has, has to have a real correction. Mm. It has to have uh, quick uh, justice as well. It uh, needs uh, to, to be quick. Uh, courts that are doing nothing but this, mm. not postponing it till next September. Mm. This uh, good that uh, the general uh, attorney, um, not the general attorney, the general prosecutor, the general prosecutor mm. uh, uh, has refused that and asked not to release them, mm. but we see this is part of a scene that should be corrected mm -hmm. things are wrong in the court dealing with that subject things are wrong in the police dealing with that subject mm -hmm. some of them are even promoted mm -hmm. this is a joke it it has to stop and by the way it cannot stop as much as uh, there is a weak uh, prime minister and a minister of interior who belongs to the police he has to be from outside the police, from the army, from the civil life, but he has to be outside the police. The good experiences we see were done by non-policemen, and we didn't have policemen except for a very short period, and then starting uh, Mohamed Salem uh, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So since it was a Ministry of Interior, it the majority of the time it wasn't a policeman. Uh, we go to our next item, but yes, Tunisia has actually started this, what you said. Uh, they have... Uh, Georgia also. Yes. Georgia started first. Uh, uh, yeah. Georgia and Tunisia last week have... Yeah, Tunisia have, yes. lately started yes. to do it. Okay. We go now to... And Sudan. as we, we follow Tunisia in removing the president, so we should follow Tunisia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the court should be quick. Uh, Egypt recognizes the southern Sudan state. It will recognize it next Saturday when it is in declared independent. We we'll go to a report now about Sudan and we'll be back to discuss uh, in more details with Mr. Mohsen Badawi. North and South Sudan agreed on Monday to continue negotiating outstanding issues between the two sides after southern independence on July the 9th. The East African bloc, IGAD, made the announcement. The six-nation body held a one-day summit on Monday in Addis Ababa that was attended by Sudan's president, Omar al-Bashir, and southern counterpart, Salva Kiir, with the implementation of the CPA topping the agenda. 
A God said it strongly condemns the two leaders for agreeing to continue the negotiations after July the 9th to resolve all outstanding issues in the CPA, including the final status of the contested Abiyi region, the demarcation of the border, oil and debt. South Sudan is due to split from the north on Saturday. However, a number of key issues have yet to be resolved under the 2005 Comprehensive Peace Agreement CPA that was brokered by the Intergovernmental Authority on development. North and South Sudan have been under considerable international pressure to strike a deal on those issues before the country divides. The negotiations are expected to continue throughout the week. And we are back now to continue our press uh, review. Uh, we were talking about Sudan, and now we move to... Uh, do you want to comment on Sudan, or we go ahead? To no, it's just things? ipso facto. Um, yeah, uh, so there is no other uh, thing to be done. All right. Uh, four new parties have uh, been uh, ratified uh, this yesterday. The four parties are the Egyptian Social Democratic Party, the Liberal Egyptian Party, the Egypt, Egypt Revolution Party, and the Modern Egypt Party. And now they can practice their political rights. A lot of parties have been starting to, to develop after the elections, after the revolution, but they have been complaining they don't have time for the elections. They're still new. Are you with uh, postponing elections or we should, we should go no, ahead? No, I'm with the, the election on time. Okay. Uh, provided we make it uh, not in a list. Not in a list. Uh, if you make it on a list, first... Uh, and ob obviously security... The majority and, uh, of the party that are coming up uh, I call it uh, TV party. Mm. Uh, none of them understands anything about the Egyptian streets. None of them understands anything about it. They are academic people, nice people, you see them on TV, mm. but none of them has experience in real life, mm. in real elections, in, because we had real elections. Um, even with fraud, we had real elections. Mm. I'm talking about elections, not the presidential. Mm. Uh, election parliamentary. parliamentary. Um, uh, they don't understand the feeling of the people, the sense of the people. They, they, they are not uh, political figures. They are TV figures or academic figures. So um, I don't think uh, the majority of them would do anything. Mm -hmm. Some of them and very few of them, uh, and I can name you uh, five or six maxim, and the majority of them did not yet uh, present their papers. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one or two uh, already are in place, one at least at most mm. is on place. Uh, I'm not really uh, thinking that uh, the party of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, would have real future with a democratic uh, scene, with a democratic atmosphere. Mm. Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamic and the radicals have only one way to win. It's uh, dictatorship and corruption. Mm. This is the only way. And the third thing is uh, despair. Yes. When people, are, when people are feeling they are desperate and they see corruption, they go for religion. They go for religion. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the only way because they do not offer you but a, a way of uh, dreaming. Mm -hmm. They don't give you really a way of... Uh, so we will see. Okay. Uh, we go to a Shuruk paper and uh, the, f the headline is about the budget that has been ratified by the military council. Uh, the revolution, they, they called it the revolution budget, and uh, it chooses, it gives priority to austerity measures and the expense of education, health, pensions, and unemployment. Your point of view on, on this uh, budget this year? I didn't yet see the budget, so mm -hmm. I need to, to, to see it uh, clearly. These are big words education, health, pension, and unemployment. Uh, I do personally believe in the Cuban uh, way of doing uh, the health. Uh, health is first a prevention of, uh, of disease. And this is exactly what Cuba did. Mm. And then they moved to curing diseases. Mm. Now you have, because of a lot of reasons, um, the additives that are added to the, 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 the gasoline mm. um, are bad to the health. If you spend some of the Ministry of Health money to, to make that better, you will see that better in the... Mm -hmm. When you, you, you make a lot of greenery, this will make the air better, so this would... When you go to the, the woman who is, in, uh, who is having a baby 
and you give him the vitamins and milk and so this is how to get a better babies in health. When you go to the school and give the kids a, a glass of milk every day, so you get a better health. Mm -hmm. So instead of having 10 million sick people and you cure 200,000, mm -hmm. just forget about the 200,000, start by making the 10 million, 1 million sick. Mm -hmm. so, so this is, I have to understand, it's not a matter of numbers, it's a matter of philosophy of doing things. So I have to read first, and, and I don't think they, they have that philosophy. Anyway. <laughs> All right, we go now to Al Weft newspaper. Uh, a blaze, uh, I have to run through uh, things because of our time. Uh, a blaze that broke out after a gas pipeline was bombed in the Sinai Peninsula is now under control. Officials shut down the gas pipeline to prevent, to prevent any leaks. Security officials said a car had parked near the pipeline. Uh, in northern Sinai town of Larish shortly before the explosion and the bomb was activated remotely and no reports of casualties uh, yet and this is uh, the third attack since February. Uh, I will take a quick report on this uh, issue and we'll be back to discuss more with Mr. Uh, Badawi. Unknown saboteurs bombed an Egyptian gas pipeline in the Sinai Peninsula on Monday for the third time since February, cutting supplies. Officials said a car had parked near the pipeline in the Bir al Abd area, 80 kilometers from the northern Sinai town of Larish, shortly before the explosion. They added that the bomb was activated remotely, without reports of casualties. The official MENA news agency said that North Sinai Governor Abdel Wahab Mabrouk had condemned the bombing as a terrorist act meant to jeopardize the stability and security of Sinai. Magdi Taufi, the head of the Egyptian natural gas company Gasco, told Mina News Agency that the emergency services brought the fire under control and a committee was formed to investigate. Witnesses said that the flames at their peak reached as high as 10 meters. It was the third attack on the gas pipeline since February. An April 27 attack on the pipeline in El Sabil area of North Sinai cut off international gas supplies. In February, attackers blew up a sector of the pipeline in the town of Lehfrin, also in North Sinai. All right, that was the uh, attack on the gas pipeline, the third uh, since February. Um, the security situation is still not back to normal yet. I don't think this has too much with the security uh, situation. Of course, the security is, um, is getting better. Mm. But I think maybe in six months we, we may sit together and we read 10th explosion. Mm. Um, this is, has a wide refusal uh, to sell gas to Israel mm -hmm. because of two things. First, um, the, the, uh, what Israel did to the Palestinian children and people in, in uh, so many raids, mm -hmm. and definitely people here are not happy with that. Second, the corruption mm -hmm. related to the, the, that contract. Mm -hmm. It was sold maybe one-eighth the price of uh, any other uh, contract and we know for fact that it was a corruption total corruption in, in doing that mm -hmm. so so uh, I think uh, when you have the backing of the feeling of the people uh, I think uh, this could uh, we have to review that with Israel we have to find out to, to get out of, uh, of that contract mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, it's not even good for them that there is so many explosions and they cannot really depend on that uh, yes. gas coming. Mm -hmm. So, uh, All right. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up. I'd like to thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mohsen Badawi, Chairman of Abdurrahman Badawi Center for Creativity. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank morning. you. Thank you, sir. And we we'll go now to a report and we'll be back with more on The Breakfast Show.